Hey there, this is Infinity and welcome to the Air Signs Full Moon in Leo on January 28th. Uh, reading we're going to get into, I have my Sage and my Palo Santo burning here. Just going to get through uh, clearing Alfie's cards for the reading. And just let you know, if this is your first video in this series, please stop it before you continue and watch the first video, at least the first part of the first video, the fire signs. Um, in the first part, about 30, 35 minutes, I'm explaining what's going on um, or what was happening between the 20th and um, and beyond the 28th, beyond the full moon and getting into the, um, the Stargate on the, on the second. So there's a lot happening there and how I was guided to do these, um, these readings by the, um, by the elements of fire, water, earth, and air. And we, I did earth and sorry, water and earth yesterday. I did fire on the, uh, the 20th, like I said. So, it, so it's, it would be great if you, if you did have the time and were guided to watch all of the readings to get a good idea of what's going on for all of the elements. It keeps it simple. Um, so, you know, nobody has time to go through and read and, and listen or watch 12 um, different zodiac signs. Um, and besides the way that we're getting these readings and what I'm going to be doing for the next um, year with the full moon and the new moon is, is these videos. So I'm going to be doing these for the fire, water, earth, and air for each full and new moon. And this is just to really give us a good understanding of what it is the different signs are dealing with. And if anything specific comes out about any one specific sign, we'll definitely touch on that. So far, it hasn't really been like that. It's been really the collective of fire, water, earth, and air, and each one of those signs um, comprising a group, the elemental group, and then that group being, uh, in charge or asked to deal with certain incoming energies and growth for our collective evolution. So, so we work in, in stages of what's all going on and that permeates to the rest of us to help when it's our turn to deal with those things. Um, and and so it's just very, it's a very interesting way to look at it. So like I was saying, if you can go back and watch all the other videos of um, uh, the, the three other ones, so fire, water, and earth, um, they're all about an hour and 15 minutes so far. So I expect this one to be close to the same. We pull 14 cards and then get clarifiers on a few of them. And then uh, I pull uh, Angels of Abundance Oracle cards and the uh, Archangel Oracle cards. We start with the Wild Unknown. So this was do some shuffling here. Uh, the Wild Unknown, it was my very first deck, the one I was guided to, and um, it's it remains the Angel and the Tarot, the two that we're using here today, are my two favorite, the ones that I use the most, the ones that I use uh, together or that I'm guided to use together. Um, and so there's a lot of feel to it, a lot of incoming um, information that comes with this. Not necessarily always, you know, going by the traditional meanings for the tarot. Sometimes yes, depending on what's going on or, or what the card is. 
sometimes no. Um, it just really, really depends. Okay. Not taking those either. Trust me, if a card is meant to come out, it will come out. <laughs> I did that not too long ago. Barely started moving the cards. A card came out, the Knight of Air came out. I was like, I barely started clearing these cards. I'm gonna stick it back in. It's meant to come out, it will. And it was the next first card that came out. So yeah, and it just like, like, just destroyed itself into my hands. It was like, I don't even know how it came out of the deck. It was so bizarre. Um, yeah, so, and that's happened a few times. So when in doubt, if you're like, I don't know if that's supposed to be in there. Um, you know, just, you'll usually get a confirmation one way or another, but sometimes you're, you're told, no, put it back just to see it come out again. So it can be that much more dramatic, I swear. All righty, let's get this show on the road. Air signs. Oh goodness, who do we have for our air signs? We have Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Oh, our air signs. So much movement, needing needing to to move move and explore and expand. Um, air signs. So if you could please just um, focus in on your zodiac sign, picture what it looks like, picture your birthday, picture your guides and guardians, and this up, <coughs> excuse me, upcoming Leo full moon, mother of swords, mother of swords. Oh, maybe this will be my thumbnail like that. Mother of Swords. Owls are kind of my, look at my new wing. It's too big because I've lost some weight, but it's adorable. Air signs, there we go. It's so cute with the moon and the infinity, um, the Celtic, not infinity and a moonstone. Mother of Swords coming in as your first card, uh, Air Signs. I love her expression. <laughs> oh, look at that, it's so great. Uh, Mother of Swords, lovely, awesome, digging it. Okay, that's just... <laughs> Putting all of that back. There's like 50 cards just went blank. I get a little excited. I do. I do have music that I like to play. That. The uh, Nine of Pentacles. So, more feathers. And nine, those Nine Pentacles, loving that. Loving those Nine Pentacles. Oh. Love it when this starts to take shape. It's so exciting. It's so intriguing and exciting to me. It really, really is. The sun. Hearing right side up with the sun. Awesome. I think we've only had one reading, but did the last reading have the sun? <laughs> Maybe it's been in every single reading. Uh, very interesting. The Seven of Swords. I love this card. The fox going, no. <laughs> Go away. 
seven of swords after the sun after the nine of pentacles after the mother of swords or the queen of swords this card ten of swords a lot of swords going on here so far ten of swords after the seven of swords don't jump ahead let's wait for the let's wait for the this is the four of swords in reverse i love it when it comes up in reverse as it did in uh they're blending together i think it was water yeah water Um, what do we have here? Nine of cups in reverse after the uh, four of swords, after the 10 of swords, after the seven of swords, after the sun. Hmm. We have the six of cups in reverse. We also got that, um, got that card, but right side up and for the earth signs. Okay. Interesting. Six of cups after the nine of cups. We have the sun of swords. And we have the Four of Pentacles. Digging that. Four of Pentacles under the sun, right next to the Sun of Swords. Another one here. Ooh, nine of Swords. Nine of Swords, Air Signs. Mother of Wands, second mother or queen we have here. Queen of Wands with the mother, of, or sorry, mother of Swords, or Wands, oh my God, can't talk. Mother of Wands. Mother of Wands, right after the Nine of Swords. Second mother for us. And then next, Father of Pentacles in reverse. Next to the Mother of, of Wands. I keep wanting to say Swords for some reason. We have her over there. So, Father of Swords, Father of Pentacles, holy moly, I'm sorry. <laughs> Father of Pentacles. Interesting. Interesting. Father of Cups after the Father of Pentacles. Right side up. So, let's take a look here. Okay. Okay. 
Sorry, just bear with me while I get the information. My head has been so itchy lately with my third eye just <laughs> it's actually not as bad today as it was yesterday it was really non-stop okay so what we have here this is talking specifically about um the the new moon sorry the full moon this this nine of pentacles here really is really giving me the, the, the full moon vibes. Um, the darkness, the illumination, but it's surrounded by those uh, feathers. And I'm just feeling this being very much um, a time for the air signs to really start picking up and on their their guidance um because that the the owl represents wisdom um sacred knowledge being wise seeing in the dark seeing what most everything and everyone else doesn't see um and and really paying attention the owl really represents paying attention and it being the the mother of swords here um the mother owl that's really the pinnacle of of when it when you think of that the fierce but mother archetype that just has that wise, respectable <laughs> energy already in there, right? So, so the mother of swords here And what she, what I, what's coming through with her and this whole thing here is about seeing seeing in the dark with that full moon for the nines. They're saying, and the nines are light workers. So all of these readings are for the light body collective, light workers. Even if you're not a professional in any way, just if you if you know you're a light worker, if you're an empath, um, a light worker on in any level of ability or whatever. It's being an incarnate, somebody here who's meant to help Gaia and humanity. That's what your soul purpose is on some level. Of course, these readings can work for, can speak to anybody, or if you this is the first time you've ever heard of what a light worker is, please visit my website and learn more about what empaths are, what a light worker is, and all that good stuff. Okay, so in the fire and it, for the earth, there were different aspects of spirituality that we're asked to work on. Here's another, another one of those. And the water signs were asked for 
to do actual physical movement and um, with their energy. But all of these other signs, including here with the air signs, specifically are being asked to open up to your your guides and guardians your angelics most specifically every single human has it doesn't matter if you're a star seed an earth angel a fae doesn't matter what you identify as every single human has a guardian angel a miracle angel and a healing angel and that's aside from all the archangels that can can work with and does and do work with um, all of us and can be called to anyone but all angels have the ability to project in any space that they are called in um, by either the archangels or um or the high council and the high council is comprised of um, archangels, planetary um, divine beings like Gaia and other and other planetary consciousness beings that have a, that have a consciousness, have a persona, um, and and hold life on their planets. So Gaia is part of that for not only her own her own world, but she's also a a counselor for other other systems other planets that are also of that um, level okay so so then there's there's different representatives of galactics there's um different representatives of of fey um and this is the high council specifically for gaia and there's gaia there's other planetary um, brothers and sisters like i said and um, I think we've got everybody. <laughs> so this is the so the High Council is who I work with. I'm an, an angelic incarnate and or Earth angel, and uh, that's the 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 angelic realm and realms and including uh the dragons are also angelic in nature. So um, so yes, sorry, I forgot about didn't mention the dragons, but I think about them all together as with angels. So dragons, I play. I got a new dragon. Manifest. So um dragons, galactics, angelics, um, or archangels, fey. Gaia herself and other planetary bodies comprise the High Council. Okay, so that's who I work with. That's who I work with to get my information, the messages I put out in the different various ways that I do. Um, that's who I work with in, in public astral meditations that I put out. That's who I work with in private healings and coaching that I do with people. Um, is their specific guides and guardians and the whole. So just to, just to let you know that um, it just didn't really, I mean, I've mentioned this many, many times in many, many various ways, but just not in the set of videos. I don't think I, I necessarily spell that out. I do have that in the description, however, Okay, so anyway, going back to this, um, this is truly about the air signs, um, I guess you could say seeing in the dark with the illumination of the moon. And here we have the sun. So this means uh, this is always with Just really great, pure, vibrant energy, abundance, um, illumination, 
epiphanies, that sort of thing. Lighting, I'm hearing lighting up the dark. So, so imagine the full moon and the sun being out at the same time kind of thing is what they're showing me. And for a lot of people, they're just kind of underneath so many layers of world and life and experience and and just kind of getting by and just kind of being um, just kind of being just too too much in it just too deep in in it in in life to be uh really seeing a whole lot even if you do already um there's still layers of things that need to be deconstructed um there's still a lot of programs that need to be deleted and that's really what what this is saying here is like there's there is really this moment coming very soon i'm feeling this with the the full moon and the stargate coming up and the stargate is all about the sun not only our sun but our great central sun sending um, pulses of light codes and energy. And so this is also representing that. This is representing the full moon and the full moon being a very divine, very divinely inspired, even more now I'm feeling it more than I did before. Um, of what is coming. This Leo full moon really bringing in uh these pulses of light so there's this greater awareness of the otherworldly support and beings that we have I mean, we're seeing, and this is in the same spot. This is coming out in the um, sixth spot again. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. We'll have to check to see if it was in the sixth or the seventh spot, but I'm pretty sure it was in the sixth spot. It was for the water signs. And here we're seeing it right after this 10 of swords um, and right after that seven of swords. So it's, so it's kind of like, what is happening here? is air signs are being are being asked to really see what cannot be seen and feel what is what's always been there but it's been subtle so there's always been guidance there's always been um what before I knew to call it guidance or my guides or being guided, I called it being impressed upon. Like I always felt that my whole life, like this impression, this like, I didn't know what else to call it, but that's what I called it or intuition. I never really, I mean, I, I, I understood what that meant, but that didn't feel right either. Cause that felt like that was just like me. And I always felt like it was coming from me. So that's why I said it would feel like, imp like I was impressed upon. But I didn't call it like, or them, my, my angels. I think I did when I was a child because I started giving psychic um, angel messages when I was like five, between five and seven years old, that's what I was doing. And I did call them the angels because I really felt that was the, as a small child, that's all that I, that's all that I, understood that to be and I was right that's what they that's what they they are mostly who is coming through and giving um messages for you if you're working with somebody legitimate if you're going to a guide a spiritual guide or a psychic asking for for advice for your life they're going to be tapping into your guides and guardians your angelics the ones that are 
so close to you, know everything about you and have messages, meaningful messages for you that are that are specific and detailed and and you know all that stuff if you're getting a, a private read. Okay, now back to this. Um so this four of swords coming in after the the sun okay so after the sun we have that seven and then we have that ten so so it's like okay listen <laughs> there's been more to life than just your intuition or your luck. A lot of people like to call it luck. I'm really lucky. And, and I'll, I'll even say that I'm such a lucky person. What I mean is blessed. <laughs> it's really what I mean. I am a really blessed person. Um, I don't really believe in luck because I know that there's so much in play to make things happen or to not make things happen that really there's no such thing as being lucky or unlucky. It's about the energy that you're, the frequency that you're plugged into, where you're resonating at, who you're connected to, what, what your choices are, all of the, all of those things. And yeah, so we can call it intuition or whatever. Really, really what it means is how connected, how connected are you? how cognizant are you that you're not alone that you have these guides and guardians that there are these angelics that are are with you and it's really funny i'm being reminded that um i have to put a whole section on my website about about angels and archangels and and how that works and what I am and 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 who I work with and all this good stuff um, is I really don't have that. It's kind of understated on my website and and it's just not like some with some people, I guess it's just like all about the angels and angels don't care to be that front and center. They're part of the way things work and and how we incarnate light workers the nines again we're called the nines um there's information about light workers and then and what it means to be a light worker and how and why the nine the nine is a light worker so i'm not going to get into that here because i'll go off on a tangent and it'll be really long so we're not going to do that so please if you're interested in learning about why the the why light workers are called the nines please see my website but anyway this leo full moon the first full moon of january is coming through so intensely from the 20th again watch that first video so intensely on so with so many slices for us to work on with in the different aspects of our spirituality. So different um, elements are working on these different slices, like I said. The air, and it's perfect with the air because the air are really the ones that can lift their consciousness much easier into and through and across the the realms um and there so th so this is about understanding more of what your partners are who your divine partners are i do call them our, our divine counterparts um but starting with your personal guides and guardians, starting with those, um, those angels that are right with you all the time. Um, like I said, your guardian angel, your miracle angel and your healing angel um, are always with you. Um, of course, your guardian angel is like so right with you. <laughs> 
your miracle and your healing angels are kind of more like tethered. And a little bit further out um, and not so deeply involved in your moment by moment world, like your one guardian angel is. Um, and so, uh, but that's not to say I'm hearing, well, with some people there, they're, they're because of what they're dealing with, their healing angel will be much closer to them because they are dealing with stuff that that their healing angel is definitely helping them with their life force and keeping them as healthy as possible and trying to give them um, you know those messages and this is why we're talking about this is you know it's it's not all cookie cutter for everybody it's a little different it really depends on on who the person is what's going on with them but just as a basic blanket generality guardian healing miracle angels are with you your guardian is closest to you and depending on who and what you are and what you do and what your life is and your body and your mission and all that really depends on how close the other ones are and even how close and and often um, archangels are in your in, in your world um as well so <laughs> In my world, it's pretty crowded with angelics on all of the levels. Dragons, archangels, angelics, because I work with other people. I work with the whole body of angelics. Um, so very, very crowded with angelics in my world. And I wouldn't have it any other way, brothers and sisters. Um, yeah, what can I say? I, I am a little... I'm a, I'm a little partial to, to angels. Um, <laughs> and so this is all about, you guys, lovely, lovely air signs. Libra balancing out that understanding between what is of this world, what is of the other worlds, the hidden worlds. Um, and, and our, our angelics definitely being a huge part of that. And most people are not connected to their guardian angels. And, and if they were on a moment to moment, open dialogue taught, like going back and forth kind of way, life would be so much easier. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Um, and so this is really about, again, with this image with the lamb and those four swords and how he's what I got for the water signs is like he's floating, like these sun, like these swords are stuck in the stuck in the bottom of the ocean. And Mr. Lamb here, you see the blue. Mr. Lamb here is is just floating. Really, is not going to get anywhere near those swords because he's connected with that third eye. Look at that sun, our second sun. We're seeing here. And our next card is the Nine of Cups. And here we have a situation with um, I'm hearing a clearing, a clearing of 
programs, preconceived notions like we talked about here, a lot of programming to identify. So this is more about identifying your belief system, your what you hang your hat on as far as what is and isn't possible isn't possible. Um, take it to what happens when you die. What's, you know, who, how does that all work? Um, you know, are, do you have guardians? Are you protected? Do you have these divine beings with you? Um, and, and really going back and thinking about your life and maybe what are the, what are the, the miraculous things that happen? How were you super lucky in situations? How did you escape um, being super injured or maybe even have, could have died if it wasn't for where you were, or what happened or who came along or, or the information that you got or you know any of the things that are just like, whoa! <laughs> Um, are good indications or good things to think about when it comes to do I have angels in my life? Um, and, you know, there's moments of inspiration, those ideas that just come to you out of nowhere. They, they don't come to you out of nowhere. You're being guided. And most likely they're your personal angels that are with you. If not, um, just a bigger a bigger voice, a bigger collection of voices. And it does take time to differentiate who's who and what's what. When I first started really in my awakening in my like 40s, um, when I first started, it was, I didn't know who was who and what was what when I was getting guided and what was coming to me for the most part, it just felt like one big voice. And I was fine with that. But as I was guided to separate and like, you know, understand and really as I ascended and as, as the density came off, I could pick up so much more and understand who was who and what was what when they would come in and start communicating with me. So it is a process and no matter where you are in your connections and in your, in your processes, air signs or anybody watching this this is good advice for everybody but specifically air signs are being asked to really understand the the messages that will be coming you're going to get a lot more heavier uptake with um with number codes and synchronicities and and really having the opportunity to be divinely led in ways that are that are new or more intense um your third eye is really going to be worked on so please focus on that third eye focus on listening to to music that helps you the frequencies that help you helps you with your third eye guided meditations um again cutting cords is such a big deal recently coming up again and again and again. So please cut cords. I have information about that, a guided meditation as well, um, because the more energy of your life force that you're bringing back from eliminating connections to people, places, and situations or traumas that are outdated and no longer relevant or downright um, draining in your life need to be brought back in. It's called cord cutting. It sounds really violent and uh, invasive, but really it's, it's just about, it's just like how you take a plug out of a wall and it's not getting power anymore. It's basically doing that. And it's just putting the power back into your life force, not being a channel of energy out to any of those types of things that I mentioned, people, places, situations, traumas. Um, so that will also help in your connection and your ability to raise your frequency, to be able to pick up on messages and pay attention to your divine guidance and guardians, um, to really be able to, they're telling me you're forgetting a big part of a big part of this is about not being in fear anymore. 
just not at all being in fear anymore. Um, and that's not easy to accomplish. But when you start to, to, to clear out old programming of what is and isn't possible, who is for who is protecting you, loving you, supporting you, guiding you, um, that you're really not alone. You start taking inventory of your life and go back and really think about some shit that went down and how it went down. And as we tend to be like, oh, all these horrible things happened to me. Well, guess what? It could always be worse. And how could it have been worse? And how were you helped and supported and guided and taken care of? How were you brought into situations or to people? Maybe in the end, it didn't, it went shitty, but were you helped did it was it what you needed at the time because we tend to think about the endings and a lot of endings a lot of the reasons why things end is because there's a fracture there's a dissonance in our in, in frequency with people and we tend to disregard everything that came ahead of that and we really need to stop doing that um we really need to see relationships and situations on a whole and really think about the nature of it and how it came to be and why the, that happened. Um, and, and I can think about a lot of situations and in, in, with people and, and, and know that yes, pro in the end, things were not in alignment and there was, there needed to be a separation for one reason or another, whether it was dramatic or it just was a fizzle. Um, either way, people and need to part ways, but when they're together and for whatever the relationship is and it's working, it is mutually beneficial. That did come together. It did, people did cross timelines for a purpose, for a reason, or maybe possibly multiple reasons. And those needed to happen and those were good. Um, so it's good to think about that. Um, when it comes to your past, your history, people that were in it that aren't in it anymore, but still may be energetically tied to you and have connections to you. So please think about those people that need to be cut energetically to give you more power to raise your vibration to make it easier so you can connect so you can feel the and hear the um, and however which way it is that you process and your telepathic, your psychic abilities with your guides and guardians, um, that we all have physical sensations that we feel, uh, we all, uh, but they, they can mean different things. So people get different feelings and at different times meaning different things. So unfortunately it isn't like this happens, it means this, this happens, it means that. For for diff, for everything, I could tell you. For example, if you if you start if you're around somebody and first you're fine, all of a sudden somebody comes around, starts talking to you, or just is in your general area, and you all of a sudden get the major yawns or even sneezing out of nowhere. A lot of times, these really um, intense, dramatic bodily changes um, that come out of nowhere mean it, your energy is being siphoned on by somebody. If they could be somebody you really like, I mean, they just come up to you and start talking and telling you about their life and their day. And all of a sudden you, you're yawning and yawning or even sneezing. Um, that's definitely a thing. So anyway, there are kind of universal experiences that happen to all of us, but there are the more subtle ones that, that mean different things that you just need to, to learn for yourself once things are cleared and, and the basics start to, to connect and you start to pay attention to those things. Um, and even for, even for those of you who already do all of this, please know this is also going to, this is about leveling up things that are in the way, deleting, um, negative experiences one way or another there's there is this energy to delete to identify and delete um old programs traumas um addictions even identifying or healing maybe you've gotten over addictions but they're not yet healed 
Um, like I have a client who had a gambling problem, but he got over that a while ago, still identified as a cord, as a, as a traumatic event because of the nature of the energy that he's carrying about all that, that needed to be deleted and eliminated. Really light, he said the next day he felt like he literally lost weight. Um, meaning vibration rises, he can connect better. So, um, so this is about, and again, going back to fear. So anything that, you know, traumas, addictions, shame, judgment, um, the basics, health, shelter, money, things that, that speak to um, the things that will cause us to be in fear um, is also a big thing because the more you're connected with your guides, the least amount of the less amount of fear you're going to have in your life because you're gonna you're just not it's just not you're not gonna be afraid of not having enough money you're not gonna be afraid of people leaving you're not gonna be afraid of your business not going or or people not you know any of the stuff that people get afraid of or that people use to control other people with fear um, or to bring up things that lower your vibration in order to to try to control you you know that sort of thing so um <laughs> this in this instance with this card i'm feeling like it's an interesting energy it's like picture yourself at the bottom of at, at the bottom of the ocean or something like this and not being in fear just not being in fear, just floating or just, it's hard to imagine going, say 20 feet underwater and just free diving, holding your breath and just watching the ocean and not being in fear of, of not being able to breathe or, or anything bad happening. That's really the energy of these two cards here. Is imagine after, after the shit, after the shit, imagine, you know, identifying some stuff and really getting to a place of, of being above that. Okay, moving on. Six of Cups showing what that would look like and feel like, that Six of Cups in reverse. So instead of the tree, you know, being right side up with the roots underneath the ground, that whole thing, we have the Six of Cups in this position right after that Four of Swords and, and the Nine of Cups. The Six of Cups is saying, look, reaching up being connected, this is just representing just how, how up into the, the ethers one can be. Um, next card here, the Son of Swords, right after that, that Six of Cups, the Four of Pentacles, this is representing to me divine guidance, ascended masters, that sort of thing. Um, and with the um, Nine of Swords, I'm feeling this as like, major breakthroughs coming, major like demons evicted, like major blocks destroyed because of this power that you now, like this is saying, this one's going, look, we're, we're together, we're determined. We're, because we have the mother of swords here and now we have the son of swords. So we have the, that connection to what what is he's moving, he's like he's moving straight towards this, and really coming up and saying, 
like I, I'm seeing how it's like this. I get this. I'm seeing this from this perspective and this is what I need to do because I'm being guided. This is what I need to do for anything. We have that divine guidance. We have that, um, those connections to our, to our guardians, our guides, our angelics, and we're not in fear. And we're just slaying anything that tries to put us in fear. It's not happening. It's like, no, I'm good. I'm good because I, I'm totally protected. Look at the mother of wands, totally protecting her babies, her eggs here. And she's not, she's not being aggressive at all, but she's just, there's no need for that. And her eggs are just like oblivious to any fear that might be going on or anything that they could fear because they're warm, they're sheltered, they're, they're protected, they're growing, they're evolving, and she is taking care of them. And that's kind of what they're showing me with this, with this, this overall energy is, is about feeling and being protected and and really living from this growing from this place um and then we have the father of pentacles right after that mother of wands but he is in reverse and then right after him we have the father of cups straight up and moving forward. So it, it looks like this with them. Um, so this father of pentacles Um, it's kind of more about this father of pentacles is really about I'm hearing turning it on like he's, he's still going to be like dormant kind of like there's a period this kind of this year working through the months of this being a like this is your this is the thing the theme kind of the overarching arching um theme for the air signs this year just a continual new wave of connection of understanding more so it's going to be kind of a, a feel like oh this is <laughs> If there's going to be some new main connection, it feels like after the new moon and into the Stargate on the 2nd of February, 2 to 2021. That on that after that and into that Stargate sensitivities, air signs to psychic impression, to energy, to, um, noises, sound, being around people, is going to be even more intense. So go easy on yourself. Um, so yeah, th there's just going to be time opportunities time and time and time again to reinforce, 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 reinforce that you can have faith, you can trust that there are going to be things that are just gonna fall away. And you're gonna be like, that is just not a thing for me anymore. I don't have this block, I don't have this issue. I've, I've thought about it, I've seen the guidance, I've learned the lesson, I can delete the program and not do repeats. 
anymore. I'm feeling like there's a lot of repeating stuff that's going to be identified. So a lot of times we, even though we go, wow, I kind of tend, there's tend, kind of tends to be a pattern where I'm attracted to a certain thing or place or, or job or person. And it seems to be repeating. We just don't get what's going on and why that's happening and we're not getting we're not listening to the guidance to get us away from doing the same repeating behavior um and that's really a part of it is that we really need to destroy and take down the the programs that keep us looping wasting energy and time and not having us us not being where we need to be um and so there is going to be this time and time again um, with our divine counterparts, with those guides and guardians, with our, our, our most closest um, angelics to us. And we are going to have that opportunity to be connected, to be up there and, and then ha and then like, it's like, this is just going to be filling up. I'm hearing just more and more layers of this while we're in this, in this feeling more into this energy, being those eggs and feeling that support from Gaia, from our guardians, getting stronger when it comes to our, um, to, to, to really feeling that that support and that love and that constant, that constant um, all the time. And it's just a, it's just a habit. It's a habit to always talk to your, to your, like a best friend, either out loud or in your head, talking to your guides and guardians, working in with, in ways with things that will help you to connect, doing meditation, of course, obviously that's huge. Um, I have a, uh, a meditation on my podcast, episode 91 for connecting with your spirit guides. Um, but I am being guided aside from the meditation that I'm going to do for the full moon. I'm going to be doing either later today or tomorrow for the full moon. Um, I will be doing a separate one for just connecting with your angels, with your guardian angels, I'm being told now. And our last card, again, this Father of Cups. So we started with the Mother of Swords, getting my attention to think about Mother of Swords and ending with Father of Cups. And she kind of goes from looking out to what's happening, what's going on, who's who's there, I'm in the dark, what's it, you know, all of that to, um, and being ready, she's just ready. She's ready for this, right? She's ready for the light to come in. She's ready to be shown where to go, um, even in the dark. And then here at the end, we have the father of cups and he's, He's moving forward, but he's, he's peaceful, he's balanced, he's stable, he's being held by that water element. Um, just picture a swan floating on, you know, swimming on top of the water and, and, and having that, that understanding. He's got that he's got that knowing from more knowing from the hidden worlds more connection from that from that realm i guess you could say from the from the other side and that's really what this is all about this is about getting in deeper connection with with your guardians with your guides helping you to move forward in your life. Um, all right, let's do this. I want to get clarification. We're going to use the angel tarot. So our angel tarot here. 
And just, just to get clarifiers on a couple of things here. I want to get, I keep looking at this four of pentacles. I've shown it to you a few times. We're going to get qualifiers on that. Okay. I just want to show you this. This is so awkward. This is so hard to do. There we go. Straight and level and all that. There we go. So you can kind of see the, the message here with the, the mother of swords and what she's looking at, what's coming, kind of waking up to, to some realizations about how things have really been for you, how guided and guarded and taken care of, identifying the programs and things that are keeping or that have kept you um, I guess stuck or stagnant not moving on and then getting above it really not being in fear starting to eliminate the fear and and then really getting to a place about just feeling good about being spiritually connected, working on it, working on it and, and building a relationship with your divine counterparts time and time again, eliminating fear and, um, and being, being, shown that you can have faith, eliminating the demons, destroying the demons I'm hearing, feeling supported, living in that supported state, and just filling up the tank. <laughs> I'm hearing this is just filling up the tank from the bottom up for forward movement. So this is going, so this is your theme of, of not just this this first full moon, but really what's coming this year, it's about your spiritual connection to your guides and guardians and how much easier that's going to make your life, how much healing you're going to do. Interesting. Four of air to clarify and amplify four of pentacles. Time to rest or take a vacation, allow more time before making a decision, meditation may provide answers. Well, look at that. So our, our four pentacles really reminding us how and who's connected to us. Four of air coming in, making eight, I'm hearing. And this whole time to rest or take a vacation. Okay, so what this is saying here is this is about kind of turning over, turning over your, your need to know to just being in faith, to let that rest, to be, to really be okay with it, to really be okay with it and to just surrender to what you already know inside, what's coming, and just to surrender to it. That's what I'm hearing with that. Um, take the pressure off uh, and let it unfold just by your intent. Um, I wanna clarify I want to clarify that six of cups. Let's do that. That's what I'm feeling. Let's get some more energy for that six of cups. Here we go. Four of water. 
another four, two fours in a row. This happened last time. Sixes for the earth signs with my clarifiers. Very interesting. So here we have the four of water. Four of water. And just a little bl blurb here down at the bottom, missing an opportunity, discontentment or boredom, open your eyes to the possibilities. Um, yeah, it is definitely about opening your eyes to the possibilities and being patient, being patient with the progress that you're going, you know, like not letting yourself get too frustrated if, if you're still a little foggy with your spiritual connections or the information that comes or any of that stuff, you know, just, just allowing for this to, to happen, for this to evolve naturally, because it will, it will just your intent to connect to the other worlds, to the hidden worlds, to the spirit, um, to Gaia, uh, open your eyes to the possibilities. I love that. Open your eyes to the possibilities and just let it happen. It's not saying make it happen. You just being, being there is making it, is making it happen. You deciding your intention is making it happen. So it's, it's that universal understanding that your intent, your energy is making it happen. But humans tend to be kind of um, impatient, <laughs> especially when it comes to advancements of the spiritual, of the, the psychic abilities and all of those things. Um, all right. Anything else here we want to clarify? I think I want to clarify that Ten of Swords because he's a little scary um, to people. The Chariot. Oh, I love it. We have the Chariot clarifying the, the Ten of Swords. So here we have the Chariot with Archangel Metatron. And it says an important achievement, self-discipline and willpower, public recognition. So again, what was this? Identifying and deleting um, what's been in the way. And this chariot is saying, yeah, this is coming. It's coming quickly with all the sword, all, all the sword energy. I'm really cutting, cutting through some stuff here, getting to the heart of the matter. The chariot really, um, I love this card so, so much, it's so meaningful. It's just your progress, I'm hearing progress in your self-development, but really spiritually, that being your, your, um, your fuel to your, your power for moving things forward for yourself. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Um, okay, next we're going to do Angels of Abundance, Angels of Abundance for our air signs. Let's see what we get here. Okay. Oh. Focus on your priorities. I like this one. Where you put your focus on is where you receive your outcome. Like we were just saying, your priorities are calling to you, which may produce a feeling of anxiety unless you give them the time and attention they and you deserve. Even a small amount of time devoted to your priorities will help you feel better and more confident. So what this is saying is your, um, your connection, your spiritual connections and meditation and, and just making your environment more conducive, making your life more conducive for spiritual connections and to, to um, prioritizing what it means to really start, you know, connecting with your guides and uh, 
setting up, you know, scheduled times for meditations and scheduled um, times and be more disciplined about journaling your experiences. Um, even doing a personal video, um, video, a vlog for yourself about, you know, like star date, you know, like this is what happened today, blah, 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 blah. And just kind of having a, a record. Um, I'm really feeling that I need to do something like that. That would be really, really great, actually. Um, and just, just if anything, having the intention to, to get what your priorities are when it comes to this whole thing. Um, calling in your guides and guardians and asking for help in this regard. How should I prioritize this for myself? What do I need to do? What should I focus on when it comes to um, eliminating old programs that keep me separated from my divine guidance, from my guide, from you, my, my guardians. Here we are again. Obstacles and blocks are lifted up. <laughs> what are we talking about right now? Yes, obstacles and blocks are lifted. Look at that. Fierce. All of your good personal work and your positive energy shift have overcome previous obstacles and blocks are lifted away. You will now experience progress and forward movement with your projects. Stay centered in gratitude and to ensure that your flow of abundance continues. Bam. Exactly. This is about lifting blocks. Like I've been saying this entire time <laughs> and focusing on lifting blocks. No more fear. Um, being connected to your guides and guardians. Um, yeah. <laughs> Waiting and opening up oh, to that, those epiphanies, those synchronicities, being able to pay attention. I've talked to a lot of people that they're like, yeah, I just don't get stuff. It doesn't come. And like nothing really happens in my world. Like I, you know, it's like, you're just not picking up on it. Like you're looking up here and it's like right here. So you're not going to see what's, <laughs> you know, funny how that works. Okay. Archangel, speak to us. Give us some information to help with all of this for our air signs. Whoop, there we go. First card out, beloved one. Oh, this is perfect. Perfect, perfect. At 12, 13 p.m., Beloved one, Archangel Shamuel, I am helping you with your spiritual soulmate relationship. So what is this saying to us? Okay, let's just, aside from, you know, people are, are meant to come into your life that, that you resonate with, that are soulmates. I, I don't really like that it's like the soulmate because we have many soulmates. Um, and, but what this is, what I'm really feeling with this is, is it saying we're helping you to connect with us, the angels, the archangels, your ancestors, your animal spirit guides. Um, this is about connecting with, with soul, soulmates on both sides of the veil, both sides of the veil. Next, clear your space. Archangel Jophiel, get rid of clutter, clear the energy around you and use Feng Shui definitely will help you to, god this is good advice definitely will help you to create a, a better stronger connection with your guides and guardians do some do some cleaning it's a great time move the furniture vacuum around everything move things around dust things clean stuff off clear your crystals get more crystals um um use feng shui read a little bit about feng shui if you haven't um, yet, if you don't know about that, that's about the flow of energy in your environment. Um, and just clear your space in general. Think about where, what needs to be cleared from your life. Really do an inventory on that. And then last but not least with Archangel Haniel, um, trust and follow your, 
renewed passion in your love life and career. So you know what this is saying? This is saying trust that anything that's not in place or out of order if they you want that you know to be uh more robust or you to have that passion and, and have a happier or more successful love life or career in any aspect of of your life that this is going to happen there will be all of these things set in the right place and um and there will be that clarity that 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 straight like remember this this priority thing um like all of this obstacles are lifted so all of this stuff the chariot coming through to say we're clearing the way for for this energy to come through so you will know look at that passion There we go. Passion. Um, trust and follow your renewed passion for your love life and career. And as this goes on, you'll just be more awake, more connected, more in tune, less static, less fog. And whatever you're guided to do to help get you there. Now, of course, working with me would be fantastic. I have an Evolve Now program that really helps people to cut the fat off, really connect with their spirit guides, with their angelics. We work directly with your angelics in these healings. If you want more information about that, please go to my website. I do um, a free two-hour consultation with a mini clearing to help remove dense negative energy, to help with all of this. Um, is, is one of those aspects aside from the physical. All right, guys, I gotta go. I'm actually late for a meeting. I didn't expect this to go so long, but here we are. This is great information. I'm so glad that I did this. I'll be posting um, the meditation very, very soon. So look out for that. It will be here on YouTube and on my, on my podcast. So if you haven't subscribed, um, It'll probably be on my podcast before YouTube. It's just kind of the way it rolls around here. But anyway, I want to thank you for being here. Leave comments. Let me know what you think about this reading and if it resonates with you. Hope you're excited for this Leo full moon. Um, and don't forget to um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Share uh, this with your fellow air signs. And I will see you soon, you guys. Bye. Have a great day.